So welcome back to part two. So let's continue our ultrasonic robot uh, build and uh, let's get into the next part. So this is the electronics and wiring it up. Okay, so it's quite a simple thing to wire up. This is actually a diagram I've used on the previous robot. Um, I'm trying to think which one this would be actually. Um, it's gone off the top of my head. It's probably one of the, uh, which one would that actually be? That would probably be um, it would probably be the spooky scary skeleton robot that I built for Halloween um, but it's basically the exact same wiring diagram so what we need to do the main things we need to take is the servo needs 5 volts so we're going to take that from the the V bus which is on the very top right of our Pico there this isn't a great thing to do what I'm going to do in later build of this ro robot is have a separate power supply um, for the robot and this will take um, a 5 volt supply rather than going through the Pico is what I'm trying to say. But for now, this works okay just on the bench. So we're going to take our 5 volts from the from the V-Bus into our servo. We're going to take one of the grounds from the Pico into our servo as well. And then we just need one signal pin. So on this particular diagram, I think I've got that down as pin, what is that, pin 15, something like that. Um, I might change that in the code later on. But we just need one pin and we just make, um, it's either on or off. No, it's not. It needs to be a pulse width modulation. So it just needs one. But I think all the pins on a Pico are PWM. So we can basically just pick any GPIO pin that we wish for that. Then for the range finder, we need one of the range finders, which is the 3.3 volt uh, compliant ones. So these are still called HCSR04, but they usually have like a P or an L on the end. I think P for like or P or L for low power. Um, they have an extra couple of chips on the back. That's how I recognize them. If you have one of these and it doesn't seem to work, you've probably got the 5 volt version and it isn't designed to work at 3.3 volts. So um, just make sure if you are, when you're ordering them, it is a 3.3 version. They usually have like I squared C and um, SPI connectors on there as well. You'll just see some little writing on the, uh, the printed circuit board on the silk screen. So from there we need the 3.3 feed, so I'm taking that from the 3.3 feed on the Pico there, which is like the fifth pin down. We take any of the grounds, um, I could have taken another ground and had that ground over there, whichever we like. And then we just need two pins, one for trigger and one for echo. Um, so on this particular diagram I've got the trigger uh, going to pin, uh, pin 1 and the echo going to pin 0. I think on my code later on I'm using GPIOs 4 and 5 for that. But um, it doesn't really matter, just as long as you know which you're using there. I always think about, I'll have the trigger as the main one I need to think about. It's always easier to get these mixed up. Um, and that's pretty much it. We don't need anything else at this point. So later on in our robot build, we are going to be powering our wheels. And I've got a bunch of these uh, really cheap uh, H bridges. Um, these are really, really cheap to come by. And I want to keep this robot as cheap as possible. Um, so these ones, if I can show you there, I think they're called an L298N. Um, and that's what they look like. And they have they have a power in and they also have uh, another four, uh, eight pins. So two for each motor and uh, it's actually four for each motor because there's like, um, no, two for each motor output and two for each motor input. There we go. Um, so if I've got four motors on my robot, I actually need two of these. So I'm going to have these in a, a mounted there's a, a tiny little mount hole there, so I'm just going to 3D print apart and I designed my robot so it's got two spare uh, M3 holes where I can put apart solidly into place with all these bits and pieces. So that's going to contain a screen, it's going to contain the motor drivers and it's also going to contain a battery as well. So that's the electronics for now, for this particular part of the build and um, the rangefinder code, right, so we looked at this on the spooky scary skeleton one but just as a quick recap um, it's quite easy to do uh, to use these range finders um, we can measure the distance by measuring how long it takes for a burst of sound to bounce off an object and return to us so when we when we actually time how long that signal takes we get twice the distance because it's had to bounce there and bounce back so we have to slice it in two uh, and you can see on the uh, the code on the right there, so we're basically just setting up the echo and the trigger pin. We can provide whichever pins we like for those. Um, we can then say, first of all, let's just reset the device. So we set the trigger pin to low. We wait um, two fractions of a second. I think they're um, microseconds. And then we then set the pin high, wait five microseconds, make it low. And then we set two variables, signal on and signal off to zero. We then wait for the the echo to come back so we say set the echo pin to zero and while it's zero we count the ticks 
how long it takes for that signal to propagate out. And then we're going to listen for how long it takes to bounce back. So we say while the echo pin is one, so while the yeah the, while the echo pin is one, then signal on is ticks US. So that just gives us that uh, how many microseconds we've uh, elapsed there. We can then have another variable that says how what is the elapsed microseconds? So it's it's just signal on minus signal off. We then can work out the uh, the duration of that. It's just the elapsed time, and then the distance is the elapsed time times by the speed of sound divided by two, which is basically how long it took and then how long it took to come back. We can then return that distance as the distance that our object in front of us is. So that's how we do a ping once and return for our ultrasonic rangefinder. Okay, so rangefinders, how do they work? Again, if you've not seen the videos that we've done in the past, we can uh, cover that off. And here we go, this is just the, the, the pins that we have on there. We've got a voltage pin, we've got a ground pin, and then we have a, tr a trigger and an echo. So I think the trigger is the uh, the speaker that sort of trumpets out like, you know, here's the ultrasonic blast. If you point them at a microphone, you can actually hear them sort of pulsing as it hits the microphone. Uh, and the echo is a, is a microphone and that can hear the sound coming back. So there's a defined pulse width that it sends out and then it listens to see how quickly that comes back. And they're pretty accurate. They can do um, about 150 centimeters, I believe. Um, and um, somebody says there the uh, the labels are mixed up. Depends which way you're looking at them. Um, I'm looking at this front on, so the voltage will be on the left hand side. If you flip that round, which is the way you normally look at it, the voltage will be on the right hand side. So uh, thanks, Steve, for that one. That's uh, just as you're looking at the device, but you tend to look at it the other way around. And there's that 3.3 volt version as well. So how do um, rangefinders actually work? So they have this ping uh, and echo thing. So here's a SMARS robot. This is how I first played with these. We've got an object that's 30 centimeters away. We send out our pulse and we can see the time there on the top. So that's 17.64 um, milliseconds. And if we divide that by two, we get 8.882 milliseconds. We times that by the speed of sound and we get 29.998, whatever roughly 30 centimeters away. So we can figure out how far an object is just using that very simple uh, maths and a very simple device. So love these, they can use them in all kinds of robots. Now, another thing I just wanted to, to show, when I build my robots and I put um, like a Pico, I tend to put them upside down against the 3D printed part. So say this is my robot, I'll, I'll put them like that so the pins are pointing up so I can plug my DuPont cables in. But unless I put a hole through where I can press that reset button, I would have to unscrew this to be able to hold down the um, the boot select button while I'm putting in um, a cable. If I wanted to sort of put Circuit Python on there or a different version of MicroPython, if you've got Python um, on your Pico, it doesn't matter whether it's MicroPython or Circuit Python, I believe, you can just do import machine machine dot bootloader brackets and it will set it into bootloader mode. So I thought I'd just share that little tip because um, it's quite a useful thing to know. Okay, so if you like my show, please uh, make sure you like, comment and subscribe. So like this video if you like it, like the, each uh, video in the series if you like them. Uh, drop me a comment, let me know if this is something that you're going to look at, you're going to have a play with yourself making an ultrasonic uh, radar robot. And if you've not already subscribed to the channel, which I think about 80% of people haven't yet, subscribe, costs you nothing and it really helps grow the channel. And I go live every single Sunday at 7 p.m. GMT. Um, so if you want to join me and have a bit of a live chat and hangout, then that, you know what to do. There we go. And if you've not joined our Discord server, you're missing out massively. You want to go over to kevsrobots.com slash Discord. It's completely free to join. And uh, you can have the com deeper conversation with us. And I'll be spending a bit more time hanging out with people through the week. And if anybody has any problems, you can ask questions there as well. You can also follow me on social media. So um, I'm on... Um, uh, Instagram as Kevin McAleer. I'm on Twitter. I'm still on Twitter as Kev's Mac. I'm going to see how Twitter goes. I'm also on uh, Mastodon as well. I think I'm just on uh, Kevin McAleer at uh, uh, Mastodon Social, I think, on that one. Um, I'll have a look, but I've not really posted very much on there at the moment. It seems to be quite uh, buggy at the moment, as in it crashes quite a bit. 
Uh, I am also on TikTok. So I've not put my TikTok uh, thing on this particular thing, but you can see down here on the side where I am, just below me, Kevin McAleer 6 on TikTok. I did a video on TikTok. It was this robot that we've just been looking at today, uh, the, the Ultrasonic Ranger Finder 1. Uh, Alex has just put a link in the, the chat there. And um, let me bring that one up actually, just so you can you can see it. I'll include this in the video description as well, actually. Uh, but you can check out this particular one. It's had like over 46,000 views, I believe at the moment. Is that what it's on? Yep. So it's doing ridiculously well for a robot video. Uh, but I think we've figured out how to do these and make these popular. Just good for a bit of fun and growing the channel. Okay, and um, if you want to help the channel out, which a growing number of people are doing, which really, really helps support the channel, you can do a super thanks. So next to the join button hint on the uh, uh, YouTube play, there's a super thanks button. If you're watching live now in chat, you can, uh, watching on the live stream that is, you can um, hit the super chat button, super thanks button, super chat button, super chat button, <laughs> if you're watching on this live on the live stream. And uh, again, that helps um, helps out the channel and you get a special call out as well for that. And you can go over to kezrobots.com slash coffee if you want to buy me a coffee as well, which quite a few people have done recently. So thank you very much for that. You'll get a shout out in a second. And if you want to join the membership program, which a growing number of people have as well, uh, you can also join the YouTube membership as well. Okay, so let me just go to the next piece, which is our supporters. Yes, I've got a special button I press for that. So here are our supporters. Uh, these are all people who have uh, very have been very generous um, in supporting the channel by buying me a coffee. So you can see we've got Frank there, we've got uh, Dana Hoff, we've got uh, Grumpy Scrambler, we've got David, we've got Matt Hungerford, we've got Flavie of Dev, and we've got Patrick. Uh, then we've got a number of uh, members as well on the Buy Me A Coffee membership program. Um, so we've got Chemi, he's a, uh, I think he's on a gold program at the moment. Shemi. So that's Chemi, Shemi, Shemi, I keep saying it wrong. Thank you, Alex. Shemi. Uh, we've got Steve and we have Thomas as well, one of our longest uh, subscribers and supporters. And then we have a growing number of YouTube members. So um, Michael, I think you joined recently. We've got Bill, we have um, Jose, we have Jeff, we have Johan and we have uh, Jean-Paul and Tom cool so if you want to get your names on here you need to head over to um, kevsrobots.com slash uh, credits and you can you can do that okay and that's it for the show today on the uh, the replay version of the show so if you're watching this um, on replay uh, this is the point in the video where I'll say thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this part of the, the video and the other three parts as well. And I shall see you next time.